welcome to day three of uh, scales. Um, so as I said yesterday, I said we'd talk about the Dunis scale system, and that's what we will do. So here we have uh, Dunis's Opus 37, Essential Scale Studies. Uh, it's out of print now, so if you want a copy of this, uh, there's a link below which you can click on and uh, go to eBay and buy one for just pennies, really. Um, so anyway, um, if you're liking all these videos, subscribe, follow the channel, slap a like on it, send it to your friends, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, all that good stuff is uh, in the link below. So anyway, um, I, I like the scale system by doing this. I, I, I do a lot. Um, and I think it's worth reading what he writes, because uh, he never wrote that much, but what he did write was very interesting. So I'll, I'll paraphrase a little bit. But basically, this is what he writes. The practice of scales has long been considered as the principal means of acquiring and developing the technique. Unfortunately, it has failed to improve the technical proficiency of all of those who faithfully devote most of their practice time to scales. And if some of them, very few, have advanced their technique, it is invariably due to a certain means employed during the scale practice of which they are totally unaware. This explains why they ascribe their progress to scale practicing. Absolutely right. If scales were the solution to the problem, then we'd have a million brilliant violinists. We don't. 90% of violinists don't play the violin very well. Um, a few of them do. Now, why? Well, they're doing something within those scales that allows them to keep improving. Um, and as Dunia says, they're probably unaware of it, so they ascribe that improvement to scales. Therefore, ipso facto, um, we all have to uh, practice scales. The main quality of perfectly played scale is evenness, and the true aim of scale practicing should be to improve constantly the quality of notes. It is wrong to try and improve shifting or different movements of fingers through the practice of scales. In order to cultivate and perfect evenness the rhythmic impulse of the fingers must be awakened and developed this is the primary aim of this book the playing of scales in various rhythms does not achieve the same results okay as to the question of fingering it must be borne in mind that from the standpoint of technique the fingers should be trained so that they are able to execute any fingering with equal ease. But, from the musical standpoint, the correct phrasing of the passage should be the sole arbiter as to what fingering to use and not technical limitations or instrumental considerations. The aim of technique should always be to make the hands the obedient and willing servants of the brain. The musical taste and comprehension of the performer are expressed by the fingering use. So here we go again with doing this. It's not the training of the fingers, it's the training of the brain. And the fingers are just faithful servants of the brain. He does, he talks about the impulse as well. We'll, we'll talk about that in another, another video because the impulse thing is a really interesting thing. Um, but anyway, so if we look at these scales in, you know, and basically, what he's done is he again he's taken a two octave scale he, he's not bothering with three octave four octave scales which is which is interesting um because almost every other scale system does for doing this it doesn't seem important we're going two octaves and we're going over three strings not four strings so what he does and you can see this uh, if you're looking at the music so we've got a g major scale where he goes up into into third position uh, just an ordinary, uh, ordinary set. and that's the scale and he does this in the different fingerings it's the same finger every time so the second one we go one one then four four so we do that one and then we go okay we want three three at the top so then we go one two three two, three, and then we go, okay, we want two, two at the top, so we go one, one. Oh, sorry, yeah, one, one, two. 
So two, two, that's rubbish. At the top. And the last one, we get one, one, one at the top. So we're just going one, two, one, two, one. And then back down again. And he does this in all of the keys. So the way I would practice this is same rules as before. We're not changing the rules. Good sound, even vibrato, evenness of scales, of, of notes, bow division. So vibrato goes all the time. So same thing, I would do four notes to a bow with four oscillations on each. Dividing the bow, then I would do eight with two oscillations. And then uh, do 16 with one oscillation. And I would do that within all of these fingerings. Again, the idea being it, of being as even as possible. So by the time you've gone through all of those, that's quite a lot. Um, but, you know, you've got down pat every single two octave scale. Then he does it on one string. So instead of going over, th over three, we're going to go up one. All the way up to the top. Same rules apply. And then at the end, as always, he's got different bowing exercises. And I didn't say this yesterday, but, but it, um, and it's, I guess it's not obvious, but, you know, we can always do different bowing exercises on this scale. So the example he's got here is up bow staccato. Or down bow staccato. Whatever you like to do. Once we've perfected left hand then we can we can throw in some some further variations anyway so this is my number two go-to scale book so um if you want to get a copy as i said there's a click the link below uh, go to ebay and for mere pence on the pound you can you can get yourself an electronic copy um so that's all good uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about the flesh system uh i think the flesh system is obviously brilliant uh, for me, it's a little bit of a long way round, but it is undoubtedly the most musical scale system and very, very useful in many, many ways. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow. So I hope to see you tomorrow. Have a nice day and happy practicing.